Hello and welcome to the National Timely Action Hour. This is the show where we talk about everything from comics to Star Wars and everything in between. I'm your host, Aiden. And I'm Seamus. Today we are going to be talking about District X number two uh, from Marvel Comics from 2004. This is a story that I just got randomly in a box of comics. And uh, what do you think about this cover, Seamus? It's a pretty cool cover. We got a flaming car, so we could get like a car chase here, and I think that's Bishop on the front cover, am I right in? Yeah, that is indeed Bishop, a member of the X-Men. He was originally uh, from the future, and I think it was in the 90s, he traveled back to the present, and he joined the X-Men. So, um, like I said, this is issue number two, so I don't really have much context for it, but I think it's pretty good. This is uh, written by David Hine drawn by uh, David Yarden and inked by Alejandro Cicat. So the story, uh, let's just show you some of the artwork first here. There's a couple of pages there. And uh, some woman with some webbed hands. So basically the premise of this story is that in New York City there is a district or a neighborhood uh, segregated specifically for mutants. And uh, what do you think about that, Seamus? I think it kind of reminds me a lot of kind of the Holocaust and how Jewish people were put into ghettos by the Nazis because they were uh, thought as different kind of others. They weren't thought of as human necessarily, and they were alienated from the rest of society. I feel like this comic takes a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah, and it's funny you should say that, because the X-Men's you know, arch enemy, Magneto, is a survivor of the Holocaust and is in fact a mutant. So you can draw a lot of parallels from his story to the people in this one. So... Uh, just going over the artwork first, I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, Mr. Yarden does a very good job um, pre depicting people in a um, sort of pseudo-realistic way, but you know, you still have that cartoony look. Um, so Bishop is teamed up with this man, uh, this cop named uh, Officer Ortega. And uh, he and Officer Ortega are investigating this murder, which I believe happened in the previous issue. Again, didn't read it. If you read it, let me know what happened in the comments for the algorithm. And if you're new and want to check out more comic book reviews and uh, movie reviews and such, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever we post a new video. And hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. So, um... This mystery, as it were, um, progresses uh, slowly, but it shows us the neighborhood, some interesting characters. So I think it's, you know, a pretty well-established uh, sort of sector of the Marvel Universe. And since it's part of the Marvel Knights imprint, uh, which was a imprint that came out in, around the late 90s, early 2000s, so the Marvel Knights imprint was a way to tell more mature stories on the darker side of the Marvel Universe. So as um, Bishop and Officer Ortega go through this investigation, they uh, meet this one guy whose mutant power is to like um, make animals come out of him. And uh, then we see the, um, here we get some shots of Bishop using his powers and an ad next to it. But uh, he's shooting this rat that came out of the guy. But uh, then we see these uh, two, um, you know, mob bosses who are fighting over the territory. And we see their deal and we learn about this new drug that the one guy is selling and how it's made by this a uh, guy whose mutant power is to, you know, make his sweat and uh, spit addictive because it's like a drug. It's pretty gross. Drugs are bad. Don't yeah. do drugs, kids. Yeah. Then we see this uh, 
this is a pretty funny scene where the one one guy is in is interrogating the enforcer for the other mob boss and he says uh, compared to juice acid is flaccid crack is whack Shroom, shrooms are uh, then he gets cut off but it's pretty funny a, mo a brief moment of brevity in this pretty depressing story and uh, then at the end we see we meet Ortega's wife uh, she's a mutant and her mutant power is to make this force field around her when she sleeps so that's kind of sad you know because he's like I just want to hold my wife while she sleeps but I can't because of this stupid bubble and that that's the end and then continues in the next issue which I don't have either but uh, I thought that this was a pretty solid story. What do you think, Seamus? I thought it was a really, yeah, overall a solid story. Yeah, so now that we're done with the meat of this, uh, you touched earlier on how this neighborhood sort of reminded you of the ghettos in Poland and such during the Second World War. Uh, can you expand on that? Like, talk about some of the themes that this might... Uh, entail. I think the biggest one is kind of dehumanization and the mut the mutants themselves are dehumanized in a sense. They're seen as scary, almost monstrous, just how Jewish people were presented as by the Nazi party and Hitler. Yeah, and a lot of the X-Men comics are about how the mutants are struggling to integrate into society and to be perceived as normal by other people. Uh, you know, a lot of people draw parallels between uh, the African American Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s because X Men came out around that time. So people are draw parallels between that and say that Professor Xavier is a lot like uh, Martin Luther King and uh, how Magneto is a lot like Malcolm X and that sort of thing, only, you know, Jewish instead of Muslim. But. Um, you know that's the main sort of conflict of the X-Men. It's not about it's not just about punching bad guys in the face and looking cool. It's about trying to uh, reclaim their identities and be uh, seen as you know worthwhile human beings and people who uh, by people who are are different than them. So a lot of and there's also uh, themes about homosexuality. In recent years, the founding member of the X-Men, Iceman, was revealed to be homosexual. And that's a whole other thing to talk about. But you see all of these different um, concepts being brought about in this uh, series and franchise. Because, you know, obviously the X-Men have movies and television shows and video games and toys. So, you know, obviously it's a very lucrative uh, franchise for Marvel to continue, but I think it's interesting how they, not only that this is like one of 25 X-Men titles, but, you know, that they're willing to continue to talk about these sorts of things. Uh, granted, nowadays they'll force it down your throat, but I don't really like to get political on this show, but I think that that's that it is pretty interesting. What do you think about all of that, Seamus? I think it is interesting. I think uh, as humans we should treat each other with love and respect and kindness and embrace each other for our differences. Yeah. And, you know, like Magneto and, and Captain America, they are men es definitely established in that 1940s era but then they grow and evolve with the times that they're written in because you know yeah these are just fictional characters but a lot of people look to fiction to draw parallels with real with real life and uh, try to find meaning and uh, try to find solace and help um, themselves get to a point of happiness but uh you know, obviously this is very nostalgic because, you know, it came out in 2004 and I remember when I was reading through this, I'm like, oh, there's an advertisement for the full DVD uh, collection of Spider-Man and, you know, White Chicks. And I, I'm like, yeah, I remember seeing all this stuff when I was a kid and the Game Boy Advance. And, but, you know, it's also 
the story within this is very timeless, I think, and uh, is pertinent to nowadays as well, as well as it, when it was first published by Marvel back in the day. But, yeah, I really like the writing, and I like the art. I would definitely check out some other stuff done by these guys. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely will be checking more out. And uh, this was part of a six-part miniseries. Uh, I don't know if it's reprinted or uh, still out there, but if you're interested, definitely seek this out because I would definitely recommend that you read it. So that is all that we have for you today. So uh, if you uh, want to follow me on social media, I'll leave a link to all of those in the description of this video as well as my Patreon page. So if you would like to uh, support the channel financially, get a slew of benefits like early access to videos, um, get uh, the ability to uh, vote on polls, send me a message, uh, get behind the scenes uh, updates and pictures, and uh, just general uh, cool posts, you can do that. Uh, we got three tiers, one that is $3 per month, uh, one that's 10 and one that's 25 um, or you can do a custom pledge for as little as you want, little as a dollar. And uh, you can also go to my uh, Teespring store and get a shirt or a coffee mug or a sweater with the channel logo on it. And I'll also leave a link to uh, my podcast. And if you want Seamus to appear on the podcast, leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.